Well, you couldn't have joined at a faster time, and it's not over yet. This cheetah's still got its work cut out, and this wildebeest is not giving up a fight. There's a whole herd of zebra that also could come in and try and protect this wildebeest. It was stranded and alone. It didn't have a mother. It was all on its own. No other wildebeest in sight. And it seems like the other four cheetahs are closing in faster than the zebra, and I'm afraid that it is over for this young wildebeest. Whew. We are coming to you live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya, and the timing could not have been better for you to join us and enjoy this live action to see the world's fastest land mammal doing its business. And to be honest, probably putting this young GNU out of its misery. Like I said, it was all stranded and alone. So if this is difficult for any of you, it is important to remember that everything out here happens for a reason. Of course, these five hungry cheetah need to eat. And like I say, this wildebeest was stranded and alone. Hello, Kobe. I couldn't agree more. This is absolutely amazing. My name's Scott. I'm teamed up with Jandre on camera. Good work capturing that action. And let's get you a little bit closer in. Woo! We spent the whole evening with these cheetah and left them at about 9.30 this morning. Went and had a snooze and just got back about an hour ago. And we saw this young wildebeest on the way in and we knew that if these cheetah headed in its direction, it was going to be game over. And that's exactly what has happened. It's interesting. It seems like the cheetah were actually getting a little bit aggressive with one another. From a distance, I saw a few flailing paws. And you'll notice one of them has a collar. That's for the researchers to keep track of their movements. And these are five males that work together as a team. It's not uncommon for cheetah to form these coalitions. Avery, yes, this is happening right now. It is exactly 5.59 p.m. in Kenya. We are in the Masai Mara National Reserve. And this is entirely live. And it is wonderful to be sharing this incredible scene with you. Look at this. Listen carefully. I'm going to keep quiet and it's worth listening now to what happens because their communication is very, very interesting. Chirping, twittering. Now with these guys, it's hard to keep track of who's who unless, of course... It's the male with the collar. But I'd be very interested to know which individual led this charge because I'm fairly certain the other four also saw this wildebeest, yet it was only one that showed the initiative to lead the charge and bring down this meal for the rest of his coalition. In the short time that we have been spending with these boys, Dartonian, who is the male with the collar, seems to have been the most dominant and lead most of the hunts. However, the behavior we're seeing now is quite different, and it seems like it's a bit of an even playing field. Hello, Claire. You are wondering if this is the same stranded wildebeest that couldn't find its mother after one of the crossings. I'm guessing that you're referring to the crossing that, I mean, there's so many crossings that have happened, so um, I'm guessing it could have been, at the moment, more crossings are happening from where we are on the eastern side. Oof, this is fascinating. All the other meals we've seen, they haven't been nearly as aggressive with one another. Maybe, and they certainly aren't starving. I mean, they were still decently well fed before they took this individual down, so this is really, really interesting. So, back to um, the crossing story. We are usually, well, most of the crossings happen from the eastern side of the river to the western side of the river. At least that's what the trend has been at the moment. 
and we are on the eastern side of the river. So if you were with Jamie or James enjoying one of those crossings, it wouldn't be the same GNU. And interestingly, in the short time that I've been following this coalition of cheetah, the very second kill we saw them make was again a stranded GNU. So I think it happens quite often in the chaos of the migration with all those numbers and during those chaotic crossings, I think a lot of young wildebeest lose their parents, or at least their mothers. Hello to Rishi. Are you interested to know how long will it take them to finish up this young Ganu? And I'm guessing it will be done quite quickly possibly half an hour to 45 minutes. That is, of course, unless hyena, lion, don't come in and chase them off it. There is a high reality of that happening. Last night we were sleeping with these cheetah not too far from here, and we had by far the most hyena activity stopping in and checking out the, these hyena throughout the night. So I think the hyena population in this area is very high. So they could well get wind of things. There could be one sleeping in a bush nearby that will hear this chattering commotion of these cheetah trying to work out who's going to sit where at the dinner table tonight. Hello, Linda. You would like to know how old these cheetah are? They are of varying ages, and I'm not entirely sure exactly the breakdown of how it works. But to tell you a little bit more about how coalitions work is that they don't all have to be born to the same mother. So these are not necessarily five brothers. And I know for a fact they're actually not five brothers because there are some that are slightly bigger and older than the three slightly smaller ones. This is one of the bigger ones, Dartonian. And as long as cheetah, before they're around two or two and a half years old as males, as long as they before that age, if they bump into other cheetah, other males, they'll have an initial altercation, but then they can kind of make friends and join these coalitions. But as long as it happens when they're young enough, once they passed, I'm told, two to two and a half years, then the likelihood of them being accepted into a coalition of possibly two brothers is a lot less likely. So what we can definitely guarantee is that all of these cheetahs are above three years of age and probably ranging from five to ten. And Laurie, yes, I mean, it is fascinating how some of them are kind of waiting for permission to feed on this carcass, which is something we haven't seen with these guys yet. And this won't be the only time they fight with one another. If you put a female cheetah who's in season amongst these boys, I think we would have a much bigger commotion than what we're experiencing now. Look at this. I'm just going to keep quiet for a second so we can enjoy the sounds. definitely stolen my heart. Like I said, I haven't worked in an area with many cheetah before. Whereas here, their population is doing quite well in the Mara, especially in the area we're in at the moment. I agree with you. You've mentioned that it seems like they're having a difficult time opening this carcass up and it's probably because they're so busy squabbling with one another. The other one that they caught of a very, very similar size 
A couple of weeks ago, there was no bickering, no squabbling, and certainly a lot more efficient and effective feeding. But I guess the lesson for all of us to learn here is that out here in nature, even though there may be general trends that animals may stick to, there's no set rule, and just like us as humans, one night dinner around the dining table may be civilized and jovial with lots of laughter, and other evenings it may not be quite the same. So maybe the boys have had a little bit of an altercation, who knows why or, what or how. They would all of a sudden be disgruntled with one another. I'm just going to ask Jandre to zoom out to give you a view of the surroundings here, because it's quite a spectacular scene the open plains of the Masai Mara. I mean, look at that. Absolutely beautiful and perfect, perfect habitat for these cheetah to do their business in. They were sleeping under that tree on the top left of the screen before they waltzed down the hill. And that's just when we've invited you to join us with this live safari action. You'll notice the one cheetah's got its head up, always looking around, and they'll all, every now and then, just have a quick look around, make sure there's no other predators approaching. They do run a high risk from being killed by lion and leopard, and possibly even hyena, if a hyena manages to get a hold of one. A, do you would like to know if they eat very slowly? No, the opposite to that, for the exact reasons I was just mentioning, there's a strong likelihood, and they know that there's a strong likelihood, that other predators could get wind of an easy meal. And cheetah are right at the bottom of the kind of large predator scales here. So lion are at the top, then hyena slash leopard, depending on the numbers of hyena. Ooh. And then cheetah. So, like I said, it's not uncommon for cheetah to be killed by lion and leopard, and even from time to time hyena. I guess that is the, <clears throat> the price they pay for being the fastest land mammal, is that they are quite slight. And that when it comes to wrestling with the bigger carnivores of this area, they do not put up much of a fight, or they can't put up much of a fight. They are simply built for speed and not for confrontation with bigger predators. <laughs> Toby, I agree completely. It is bizarre that they are being so vocal and they continue to do so as we speak and Toby says for the exact reason we've all been discussing now is that geez, they were just having a go at one another it's like it doesn't matter who's where they're just swatting one another and the reason being is that all this commotion could give away their position to all these other predators that we've been talking about so absolutely fascinating I'm going to enjoy spending some time with the cheetah researchers when we get a moment and be able to pick their brains and ask them a little bit more about these animals and what their kind of general behavior is because we sadly just haven't had time to sit down and chat with them yet we've either been out in the field trying to get you guys as close to this action as possible or fixing our very intricate equipment and toys or sleeping. So those are the kind of three things that the Safari Live team are doing. They're out scanning the planes, sleeping, or fixing things. So we haven't had too much time to chat with some of the local folk who are going to be able to give us more info on these animals. Peggy, yes, they sound a little bit like hyena, I guess. They're almost a cackling laugh. It would be... Very interesting to hear the commotion of some hyena come onto the scene. That is for certain. And what's interesting last night with all the hyena that did pop in to check that there wasn't an easy meal waiting nearby the sleeping cheetah is that most of the times the cheetah would actually leave the hyena alone 
And they would allow the hyena to come within meters of them, just sniffing around looking. But on other occasions, the cheetah just wouldn't tolerate certain hyenas. So you don't know. I mean, I ask myself the question, do these predators know their competition individually and tolerate some more than others? Because the fact that one hyena can come close to them and sniff around and the other can't was very, very interesting. And what the cheetah will do when animals like hyena come in or other cheetah is they kind of rear, not rear up, but they will lurch forward with their two front feet slamming, two front legs slamming down into the ground. That's how they kind of create an intimidating scene to try and deter whatever competition may be lurking about. I have actually on one occasion, um, the few times we saw Cheetah in the area of the Sabi Sands where I started my career as a guide, it was actually really interesting. We saw a hyena walking along an open plain, not hugely different to this, and it crossed the trail of where we had followed the Cheetah. The Cheetah had been kind of up and down that afternoon, but when we were at the time the hyena came onto the scene it was lying down and the hyena picked up the scent of the cheetah as it bisected its path and then got onto that trail and started following it knowing that it could well find a meal and a cheetah at the end of it and when it got to the cheetah about 200 meters after initially finding the scent trail it kind of slowly circled around the cheetah and I told all the guests no nothing's going to happen cheetah are not confrontational animals and all of a sudden this male cheetah just burst out and walloped the hyena on the bottom as it headed towards the hills. So, even though it's not likely for that to happen, or at least I didn't think it was, even Cheetah will give hyena the odd slap when the time is right. Now you'll see they're starting to make fast work through this carcass now that they've opened it up. You can see they are not wasting any time. And as darkness begins to set in, they're going to be eating even quicker. Brenda, you'd like to know if they're going to hunt again. They could well. Um, the, the scenario that I was talking about when they killed a stranded young GNU about two weeks ago, they had killed another one that same morning. So they'd killed one, eaten it, and then stumbled upon an easy stray GNU and killed that and ate it as well. So they can eat two baby GNUs in a day. But their likelihood to search and seek out some food is going to be kind of less prominent. And I think it'll only be if they stumble upon or chance upon another very easy meal that they will take it. I'm also quite confident that they were decently well fed before they made this kill. <clears throat> so that's also something we need to factor into the equation. Well, I'm glad we got, we got you guys on board when we did. We almost missed the action. So that was just in time. And what an absolute treat to be spoilt with such high-intensity action on a beautiful Mara afternoon. Now you've brought up a good point of discussion regarding the hyena that I was discussing last night, some being tolerated by the cheetah and other not being tolerated by the cheetah, and you're suggesting that possibly it was the male hyena that were being tolerated because they are not as big and intimidating as the female hyena who are the most dominant within hyena society. It is plausible. I mean, it definitely is a possibility. The cheetah, though, aren't going to really know what the hyena's hierarchical status is. I don't think they pay too much you know, attention to that. But what they do pay attention to is what they see in front of them, and that is a smaller hyena versus a bigger, more hormonal and more aggressive female hyena. So it could be that the female um, hyena get either more of a negative response or less of a negative response, depending on what the cheetah decide. I guess if the male hyena are less of a risk to the these cheetah, they may be more likely to chase the males. So it's a good point that you've brought up, and you'll have to keep a closer look. The tricky thing is it's so difficult for us to know which is a male hyena and which is a female, because they're 
genitals look very similar. So after dark, it's going to be tricky to know exactly who's who, but it is going to be something that we should definitely look into. So thanks for planting that seed. Well, team, um, it's been wonderful having you on board. We'll give you one last view of the cheetah, <clears throat> one last view of the sunset, and then we are going to say goodbye, let you get back to whatever you are doing, and be ready not to miss out on any other Facebook Live action that could happen at any stage. So we'll leave you with that. It's been wonderful to have you on board. We'll see you next time. Well done, Jandre. Good job on camera. And looking forward to the next hunt.